Hey, 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 y'all. It's me, Grant Wiley, here from Worthington Publishing, and I'm going to be doing a gameplay video on Lincoln by PSC Games and Worthington Publishing. This will be coming out in May on Kickstarter, but we wanted to give you a preview. Uh, I'll be playing my brother, Mark Wiley. This will be our first playthrough, and uh, Mark's reading the rules right now. I figured I'd go through the opening setup and give you a component overview. You see the board laid out. Uh, along the right-hand side here, you see the Europe track and the blockade track. Uh, what that is is the Union player obviously is in trying to enforce the blockade. The Confederates are trying to get Union intervention. I mean European intervention. If the Confederates can get the European track to here, they win the game. Uh, this, the blockade track, affects how many cards the Confederate player will have in his hand as well as victory points. The closer down here we get the track, the more points the victory Victory points the Union player gains, and the less cards in his hand the Confederate player gains. Victory is the Confederates win by occupying Washington, the Union wins by occupying Washington and Vicksburg. Uh, game starts set up. Each player gets a deck of cards, an opening deck of cards. The Union player always gets six cards. The Confederate player starts drawing five cards, and that reduces as the Union blockade text takes effect. We start with armies over here on the side that will be added into the game later along with forts. Up here you see deck one. When the players get to their first, uh, have ran through all their cards in their initial draw deck here, if the Union player does not have two victory points, the Confederate player wins. The game's over. If the Union has two victory points or more, He'll shuffle these cards here into his hand, and that becomes his new draw hand. The Confederates, when they go through their deck, just shuffle in their card. There is no victory condition for them. When the Union goes through his draw deck again, if he has five victory points or more, the game continues. He adds in these cards, reshuffles his hand, and that is the, uh, his hand for the rest of the game. If he has four victory points or less, the Confederate player wins, the game ends. The Confederates shuffle in those cards. What's interesting is the Confederate player starts with the stronger hand than the Union initially. Uh, the Union will add in stronger cards as the game goes along, which reflects them getting better generals and more, um, I, I guess, resources added to the Union army. The opening setup is interesting. The Confederate player starts out with stronger armies than the Union uh, total, but theirs are more dispersed. You can see the Union starts out with two in Kentucky, two in Cairo, while the Confederate player starts out with one in Nashville, one in Fort Henry Donaldson. Um, and the Confederate player starts out with three in Manassas, two in, uh, I want to say, Front Royal, and one in Fort Monroe, while the Union starts with three in Washington, D.C., and two in Harper's Ferry. Uh, Fort Monroe, I think what it represents is not necessarily Fort Monroe, but the Confederates having the Union forces bottled up at Fort Monroe. Um, the uh, supply sources also for the Confederates are Richmond and Atlanta, and I'll explain that as we go through gameplay. Um, other important points in gameplay, uh, Washington support, you can see Fort Monroe support, Savannah support, and that's shown by the little blue uh, ship icon here in the circle, and New Orleans is also a port. The Union can do naval invasions if they have a naval movement card. The Confederates have none of those. Um, so I'm going to turn off the camera, recharge this battery, put a fresh battery in. We'll be beginning gameplay in a moment. You won't get to see the break. You'll get to see the start.